Good evening, Moray Verabutai. You know, I'm running to my third shiur in the past one hour. No breather, no sitting down. So we're going to, Bezalel Hashem, try to make this happen. For the Rifwa Shlema, a very special boy in the community. Binyamin Netanel Ben Bracha Tova. Bezalel Hashem, he should be having a full recovery, come back to his parents at home, to his siblings at home, to his grandparents, to his whole family, Bezalel Hashem. And we should always get together for his machot, for his bar mitzvah, for his wedding. And we should only hear besarot of Enkeni Ratzon. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be talking today about the topic of overcoming challenges in life. Challenges in relationships in particular. You know, Baruch Hashem, we all have challenges. We all have our ups and downs. And the longer you live, the more challenges you're going to have. That's just how it is, unfortunately. I always tell people, when it comes to marriage life, there was once a young man that was walking down the street and he sees a very prominent rabbi. He says, Kod Arav, Kod Arav. I get a Mazal Tov. Why Mazal Tov? He says, Rabbi, I'm getting married next week. Oh, Yishkabach Shemo, Baruch Hashem, Mazal Tov. He says, Rabbi, can you do me a favor? Give me a bracha. Can you give me a nice blessing? The rabbi says, what bracha do you want? What blessing do you want? He said, give me a blessing that I should have a perfect marriage life. Everything should be smooth. Shouldn't have any bumps in the road. So the rabbi looks at this young man as the guy goes like this, the kid goes like this, and he's not giving him a blessing. He says, Kodarav, let's go, what happened? He said, I can't give you such a blessing, why not? Because I know this blessing will never work. No such thing as a perfect marriage life. But I will give you a bracha that you should have the wisdom and the inner strength to overcome the challenges of marriage life. That's a bracha I could give you. So ladies and gentlemen, if you think anyone over here has a perfect relationship, and I know sometimes you look at someone and like, wow, I wish I could be like them. You don't realize how everyone has the baggage of problems. Everyone has their Shalom Bayi problems, everyone has their frustrations, everyone has their arguments. The goal is not to be perfect. The goal is to learn how to overcome these challenges and make sure things don't get worse, just keep growing and not making it worse. So Bezer Hashem, today we'll try to discuss a few concepts. I'll try to keep it as a short class so we can give you guys a chance to ask questions. And hopefully we can all grow together. Bezer Hashem, Yidvarach. So... Let's, let's get, to, get to the chase. Let's get straight to the point. Who over here does not have problems in marriage life? Raise your hands. You're probably single. <laughs> no. Rabotai, <laughs> you know very well, Baruch Hashem, we all have problems. And people always say, Rabbi, I can't change her. I can't change him. You ever feel that way? I cannot change him or her? That's the first problem. You're not supposed to change him, and you're not supposed to change her. Everyone's supposed to work on themselves. When it comes to relations, when you think about how to change your spouse, that's where you hit the first brick wall. The first goal of relationships is, Rabotai, ladies and gentlemen, how can I improve myself? And then I guarantee you, your spouse will reciprocate. I'll share with you a famous Gemara which I personally get a lot of chizuk, a lot of inspiration from it, because it really shows us how Hashem runs the world and what our perspective should be when it comes to our lives. It's a very, very powerful Gemara. I want you to listen carefully. Gemara in Yuma, it says as follows. There were three rabbis that were on a long journey. Who were the rabbis? They were Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Yehuda, and Rabbi Yossi. They were going on a business trip, on a journey. Now what happens is, Rabbi Meir had this custom. He would look at someone, and based on his name and his features, he could tell what kind of individual he is. He could figure out exactly his personality. Could you trust him? Could you not trust him? He had this chokhmah, he had this wisdom. So these three rabbis are going on the way, and they come to a, a stop. It's Erev Shabbat, they got to find a hotel. Baruch Hashem, they find a nice place that they have, uh, Baruch Hashem, some money in their pocket. It's Shabbat, where are they going to keep the money? 
Now today when you go to a hotel, you have your private rooms, you have your secu- you're safe, and you have a lock, and you have everything, Baruch Hashem. Back then it wasn't like that. You go to a hotel back then, and you had basically a room this big, you had 30 beds, and uh, you keep your belongings next to your bed. And if you have to leave, you take the important stuff with you. But being at Shabbat, they can't carry the stuff to shul. So they had to find someone they could trust to hold on to their money. Who do they go to? They go to the manager of the hotel. Rabbi Meir asked the manager, tell me, what's your name? He says, my name is Kidor. Rabbi Meir looks at the guy, Kidor, he sees a pasuk in the Torah, Kidor ta'fuchot hema, which hints that this guy is a, a crook. You can't trust him. So Rabbi Meir does not want to give his money to this guy. The other two rabbis, however, they take their, their stash of cash. He said, Kidol, here we're giving you the money before Shabbat. You have Baruch Hashem an area in the hotel to hide it. Please take care of it. Okay. Baruch Hashem, what happens is, Kidol takes the money, he hides it. Shabbat comes, they enjoy, Erev Shabbat, they sing, Kabbalat Shabbat, they have a nice meal, the rabbis. The next morning they wake up, they wake up nets, Daniel, it's for you, right? They wake up nets, and as they're walking out, Kido, the manager says, hey, Rabbi Zabbat, I have a question for you. I had an unbelievable dream last night. Are dreams of Friday night dreams that actually happen, or they're just, uh... So Rabbi Mary says, what was your dream? So I'll tell you what the dream was. Now I'll add one point which I missed. Rabbi Meir refused to give the money to this guy. What did Rabbi Meir do before Shabbat? He took his money and he was walking around town and he found a cemetery. He saw a cemetery, he went between some of the graves, he saw some bushels of, uh, of plants and he hid his money between the plants. And then he came back to the hotel. That's where Rabbi Meir kept his money. The other two rabbis gave it to the manager. He didn't. So this manager tells him on Shabbat day, I had a dream, what was your dream? My father came to me in the dream, says Kido. And my father told me, come to my grave site. You're going to find Bukhta Kesev, a lot of money over there. Come take it before it's gone. Rabbi Mary hears this, like what? I hid my money by his father's grave? <laughs> so, the manager is saying, Rabbis, are dreams of Friday night real or not real? Rabbi Mary says, dreams? Come on, you and your dreams. Are you crazy? Forget about it. They don't believe dreams. Rabbi Meir immediately leaves and he goes to the cemetery and he waits for the whole Shabbat. He stood in the cemetery the whole Shabbat to protect his money. Motzei Shabbat comes and Rabbi Meir and the rabbi says, hey, where were you the whole Shabbat? We didn't see you. He's like, oh, don't even ask. And he tells them the story. They're like, ah, you see you and you're... Okay. They now come to Kido to ask for their money. Kido, can we get our money back? And what is the answer? What money? What are you talking about? You gave me money. This manager starts denying it. The rabbis are saying, what are you talking about? We gave you money before Shabbat. You promised you're going to keep it for us. He plays stupid. But that, the story ends off where they find a way to get their money back. I don't want to focus on that. I want to focus on a very powerful point of view. Listen very carefully now. Kido's father is already dead for many years. When a person dies, he goes to the next world. He knows what's right. And what's wrong? He knows what's mutar and what's asu, what's permitted and what's forbidden. How could it be that Kidol comes, his father comes in a dream to his son, and he's encouraging his son to steal? A father that's dead is encouraging his child to come and steal. Does this make any sense? He knows it's asu to steal. How could the father encourage a child to do this? This doesn't make sense, says Rav Chaim Shmulevitz. Who can give me an answer for this? Yehuda, let's go. You look like you're deep in thought. Anyone else? Ariel, I'm going to pick on you. No speak English. Yes. Okay, don't, don't start to, you know, justifying people's thievery. You hear? Anyways, anyone else? Richie. Come on, you have your game face on. Let's go. <laughs> Rabbi Tai, listen carefully. I'm going to tell you guys the foundation of life. Look what Rav Chaim Shmulevit says. We have a rule in Judaism. Bederech she'adam holech, 
מוליכין אותו. The path you choose in life is the path Hashem will help you reach. Says of Shmuel Levitz, that this path Hashem will make for you, even if it's above nature. If you really want it, it's going to happen. So Kidor was a thief. He lived his life as a ganav. His father was a thief. Even after 120 years, this path of life that they chose is still happening because they lived it with all their intentions. The path you choose is the path that opens up. Unbelievable concept that a father comes from, from Shamaim after 120 encouraging a son to steal. That's how you live, that's what's going to happen. Ladies and gentlemen, for you to tell me or anyone, Rabbi, I cannot control my anger. I cannot control my jealousy. I cannot control my mouth. Rabbi, it's because you don't want to change. If you really want to change, if you really want to improve, Hashem will open up the path to improve. He will open up the path to change. The problem is that we're many times not putting the effort into it. We're waiting for the other one to make the first move. And the second move and the third move. Instead of focusing, how can I improve my Shalom Bay to save my family, to save my children? We're focused on what? But she, but he, but this, but that. Ladies and gentlemen, if we just say, I want A, B, C, D, whatever it is that you want, and you put your focus into it, you'll be shocked how much inner strength you have to overcome that challenge. Because we don't realize the kochot that we have, the powers that we have. And I'll share with you a very famous story. There was a guy that came to a rabbi and said, I have only one problem. I get angry. If my wife doesn't get me angry, I won't get angry. But if she does, ooh, Hashem Yishma, what happens in the house? Now, I love it how people say, Rabbi, if she doesn't get me angry, I won't get angry. Obviously, I mean, well, you'll get angry for no reason, right? But if she wouldn't do it, if he wouldn't do it, I wouldn't get angry. So he said, Rabbi, if you can help me fix this problem, forget about it. I'll be the biggest tzaddik in the world. So the Rav says, you know, I have to think about it, how to help you out. I have to think about what the right approach is. So he tells this young man, do me a favor, sit outside of my office. I want to think of a technique to help you with your anger problems. Okay? The rabbi calls his gabai, his helper, and he tells the gabai, come, do me a favor. I have this young guy that has anger issues. I want to test him a little bit. Then the rabbi is talking a little bit in a pretty high voice to this kid, this young guy could hear him. He says, do me a favor to the gabai, get me a cup of coffee, and not too hot, you know, nice and warm. And as you're walking by, the, the young man that's sitting in the hallway, do me a favor, spill it on him. I want to test him. I want to see how he gets angry at you. Now this guy is hearing this whole conversation. Okay. The guy goes out. He says, Shalom Aleichem to the guy in the hallway. He makes the rabbi some tea, some coffee. As he's walking by, he, he trips and spills it on the young man. And the young man says, don't worry, it's all good. And the Gabbai says, it's all good, you piece of garbage, you stuck your foot out. And he starts screaming at him. He's like, no, it's okay, it's okay, don't worry, I apologize. And the Gabbai is again accusing him, and the guy is not getting upset. Okay? The Gabbai comes back to the rabbi, and the rabbi says, bring the young man back to me. The young man comes back into the room, the rabbi says, listen, I'll be honest with you, you are my role model. I just saw what happened. Someone spilled coffee on you. You didn't get upset. And then when he accused you of sticking out your foot, you were still calm. You tell me you have anger issues. I wish I had your issues. You're a tzaddik. So the guy looks at the rabbi and says, Kod Arav, I'll be honest with you. I overheard your conversation. I knew you were testing me. I knew you were testing me, that's why I didn't get angry. So the rabbi looks at this young man and says, listen to me very carefully. The next time your wife or children get you angry, you should know Hashem is testing you. Hashem is putting you through a test. Try to pass the test. You know, in life, when we know we're being tested, we work extra hard. When we know someone's watching us, we work extra hard. 
Today it's become a little bit of a disease. You ever see people, they do charity, you see a poor guy in the streets, right? And suddenly on Instagram and Facebook, you see this guy coming, giving him uh, uh, gloves and giving him some charity, right? And he posts it everywhere. He tells his friends, please record me as I'm doing this charity. Because we want the world to see we're good people. It's almost become a machala. It's a disease. Where people have to see the good acts of kindness we do. The Chachamim tells you, you should know, you should know everything going on in your house is being watched by Kadosh Baruch Hu himself. To be a good guy and a good girl in Shul is very easy. To be a Hebrew man in Shul is very easy. Hey, hey, Ruben, how you doing? What's up? Give him a hug, give him this, hey, all the cool hands. Right? The question is, when you come home, do you get that same excitement from the people around you or they get scared of you? Well, Abba, the terrorist is home. Okay, everyone, be careful. Right? Hi, are you a Hebrew man only in Shul? You're also a Hebrew man at home. The test of life, Rabbutai, is to recognize and realize that Hashem is watching us and He's testing us. That means when your husband comes late when he promised you to be at a certain time or your wife didn't prepare this or the kids didn't do that, you're being tested by Hashem. Pass the test. Pass the test. And for those of you who say, Rabbi, it's impossible. I ask you a simple question. Imagine you're having a big argument. And you're screaming and you're fighting and you're cursing. And suddenly the doorbell rings. The doorbell rings. You come to the door. Hey, 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 my neighbor, how you doing? John, I'm me some tea. Here, up, sit down. Like, what just happened? The answer is, when people are around, people see, people hear, suddenly we're different people. We're able to Plus the switch on and off if we want to. The question is if we want to. And how many times we fight and our kids see it, and our kids hear it, and they're being, you know, traumatized from it. <sighs> Who's the kids? Yeah. Neighbors, chaz v'shalom. You know, my friend, chaz, but my kids didn't see a big deal. Rabutai, you don't realize you're, you're causing terrible damage to them, chaz v'shalom. So for anyone that says, I can't, you should know the Gemara is teaching us here, the path that you choose, is the path you will succeed in. So if you want to improve your anger problems, your patience, your jealousy, your mouth, you can improve it. There's no one to blame but yourself. Don't blame your spouse for it. Blame yourself. Because if you try, you will see tremendous, tremendous improvements in life. Now, with this being said, Rabutai, we have to realize we live in a very competitive world. A lot of competition. We're always, you know, trying to impress our friends, our neighbors, people that we don't like especially, right? We're always trying to impress people. And it's, it's also another machala that comes and affects many people's homes. At the end of the day, it causes a lot of damage to people's homes. Why does she have this? Why does he have this? I told over on Shabbat, we know if Chaim Kenevsky passed away this era of Shabbat. One of the greatest tzaddikim in the past, who knows how many generations. Not just a tzaddik, but he had a mind that had the whole Torah encompassed in his mind. Unbelievable. Have to live a failure. To show you how he lived his life. Not that we have to live like this. But I want to show you how he lived his life. And maybe we can apply a little bit of it into our lives. He had seven or eight children. Some of them, most of them are still alive. I think one or two may have passed away already. And he lived in a one and a half bedroom apartment. I'm sure many of you have been to his house before to get a bracha. Very tiny house. Right? He had a very, very tiny house. To exit his house, you have to leave through his bedroom. You know, mamash, that's how it is. You enter from the front, you leave from his bedroom. Mamash, tiny house. So many years ago, decades ago, some wealthy people from here in New York, from America, they came to the rabbi's house and they offered to build an extension for him and his wife so they could have more space for their children. If someone offers to build an extension for your house, they're going to put down the money. What does the average guy say? Hey, hey, yeah, of course. Let's go. Where can we start? So they told the rabbit to him, you're willing to put down the money to extend your house to so you have more space. Yes or no, rabbit? She says, let me ask my husband. She comes to her husband. She discusses with him. And he answered her, no. And he gave her an explanation. She comes back to those donors and says, listen, I spoke to my husband. And uh, he's not accepting this donation of yours for the extension. Oh, but tell your husband we're covering every penny. Not a single penny will he have to pay for. So my husband said, no, but why not? Listen to what Rav Chaim Kanyesi told his wife. 
He said to his wife, you should see, in Bnei Brak, that's where they lived, most people live in very tight conditions. Most people have a bunch of children in their family as well. So if I, as the rabbi, build an extension to my house and make it bigger, then other women will complain to the husbands, look, the rabbi has a bigger house, why can't you get me a bigger house? So not to create an environment of competition, he refused to get this free extension to his house. We're not like that. We're not going to reach our level because it takes decades of work, of midot, of fighting against the Yetzirah to reach our level. But what we could do is stop looking at what other people have and trying to compete with them. And then having fights. But they went on this vacation, but they went this, look at this, they got a nice car, they got this. Rabotai, look at what you have and say, Baruch Hashem. We have to stop constantly trying to see what other people have. Trying to compare our way of living to the way of living that other people have. People have to just say, Baruch Hashem, I have what I have, and that's it. How many people are working extra hours, seeing their family less because they want to get more? But you have a lot. No, I want to get more because he has more. Rabotai, we have to end this feeling of competition as if we're in this world to, to try to compete one against another. This is not the Derech HaTorah. That's not our goal in this world. That's not our purpose in this world. I'll share with you a, a famous story with Yosef at Tzaddik. We all know Yosef was, how old was he when he was uh, set up for this trap and put in prison? Anyone knows? He was a teenager. 17 years old, young man, miskin. Think about it, his own brothers nearly killed him. Then they threw him into a pit and they sold him and sold again and sold again till he eventually got to Egypt. And then he's put in prison on false charges. Rabotai, if you're put in prison after doing Averot, no, you accept it. You, you made a lot of money, you accept it. But this guy was put in prison on false charges as a teenager. What did the Torah tell us? That Yosef at Tzaddik, everything he did over there in prison, he had Hatzlacha, he had success. Now, Rabotai, what success do you have in a third world country's prison? Success? What success do you have in prison? Can you explain this to me? What are you talking about? Why is the Torah testifying that everything Yosef did, successful? Successful with what? It was a rat hole of a pit, right? That's not like you know, today, if you, certain crimes you have in prison, but you have, you know, basketball leagues, you have, you know, Minanim, Svaradim, Ashkenazim, you know, you have something to, to look for, chess clubs. We're talking about a, a prison where there's nothing going on over there. So what does it mean Hashem said he was successful with everything he did in prison? You know what the sages tell us? Tell us something very, very fascinating. How do we usually measure success? You compare my wealth versus your wealth. My house versus your house. My car versus your car. My wife versus your wife. My grades versus your grades. Right? We're constantly comparing one person to the next. One family to the next. One business to the next. This is how it is in the world today. What's the Torah telling us? You know how we measure success? One person's potential versus that person's actuals. We're not comparing this person to some other person. We're comparing this person's potential versus this person's actuals. So for yourself, whatever his potential was in prison, Hashem says he was successful, you reach his potential. What happens is today, Rabotai, so many of us are so engulfed and seeing where they went and how he did and where was their vacation and where did they go on the vacation and hey, why can't we do this and why we can't do that? And we're constantly comparing and comparing and we're never happy. Instead of saying, Baruch Hashem, look at us, we have this and we have that and we're able to do this, we're able to do that. They're saying, but they did that and he did that and she went there and she went there. If you want to learn how to overcome challenges, look at what you have and work with what you got. My rabbi in Yeshiva used to always tell us, it's a very powerful line, don't complain about what you don't have, be grateful Hashem doesn't give you what you really deserve. We don't realize sometimes the bracha that we have in life. It's only when we miss that bracha that we start saying, wow, I was living a good life. We have to appreciate, Rabotai, everything that we have. Say, Baruch Hashem, Ishtabach Shemo. I sat down with someone recently, his father is deathly ill. He said, Rabbi, I want to tell you something. Not a religious guy at all. But a good man with a good heart. He says, Rabbi, I want, you to tell, I want to tell you something. I used to always think that the concept of a bracha, concept of a blessing, is a very 
Forgive me for saying it, it's a very silly thing. When well, you're blessing God, you're drinking water, you're blessing Hashem. You're eating some bread. How much lechem now? What Hashem needs are blessings. I always thought it was a very silly concept, this man told me. But he says, I then realized now that the, that the father is sick and he's not able to eat, he's not able to function, I realized the blessing wasn't so much for Hashem, the blessing is for us. To appreciate what we're able to do with what Hashem gave us. To appreciate the fact that we're able to eat and to drink. We're able to go to the restroom. To say Hashem Yatzar. We have to realize that the blessing is not for Hashem. He doesn't need it. It's for us to recognize the bachot that we have. Rabbi I'm telling you, we, we don't realize sometimes that instead of saying thank you, we're constantly bickering and complaining. Instead of appreciating the fact that you have your father, your mother, your grandparents, your wife, your husband, your children, whoever it is that you have in your life, that the fact that they're Baruch Hashem with you, we, we, we're almost blind to it. And I think the message tonight is to come to appreciate what you have. Sometimes we create fictional, uh, fake, fake uh, 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 problems in our lives. We have to realize the real problems are the real problems and the fake problems are the fake problems. And you have to differentiate between two of them. And you have to realize the bracha that you have. And when you have challenges, to have a munayin Hashem to try to overcome those challenges. I'll tell you one or two more pointers, which I think is going to hopefully give us a little better understanding of what it means to overcome challenges. I saw a beautiful book a while back. And I looked at this going back, I would say about 20 years ago. And I try to review this book every once in a while. It's a book written by Rabbi Tzion Abba Shaul on the concept of Musar, ways of life. And he talks about what it means to have kamocha, what it means to love others as you love yourself. And I saw a commentary that brought down the following mashal. There was once a gvir, a very wealthy guy that was invited to yeshiva. They wanted to get a donation out of him. So they brought this guy, come, they got the yeshiva already, all the classrooms look nice and, and professional and beautiful. And the wealthy guy comes in, and he comes in with a bag of balloons. A bag of balloons. And he starts looking around the classrooms, how many kids in this class? 30 kids. He takes out 30 balloons, four different colors. Black, white, pink, and blue. And he gives out... 30 balloons, one to each student. He tells the kids, everyone blow your own balloon and write your name on it. Okay. They start blowing. <laughs> everyone blows a balloon, writes their name on it. He tells them, give me the balloons back and he puts it in a huge net. And he ties up the net and he stands up on a chair. And he says, boys, listen carefully. I'm about to cut this net and all the balloons are going to go flying around the room. You have 30 kids in the classroom, 30 balloons, I give you guys 40 seconds to find your balloon. Every kid, if every kid in the class finds his balloon, the whole class goes on a one week retreat. Okay, everyone's getting ready. Now keep in mind, there's four different colors. So everyone knows more or less which color is his, right? He has pink, he has white, he has black. The guy cuts a balloon and everyone starts running while they're looking for the balloons. 10 seconds, 20 seconds, everyone popping, by, blasting right and left. After 40 seconds, how many kids find their balloon? Three kids. He says, come on guys, only three kids in it? I'll give you guys another chance. And again, he gathers all the balloons together. And he stands in the chair and he starts throwing it up. And again, the kids are running wild. They're looking, and they're moving, Shimon, Levy, everyone's throwing it around. After the time is up, how many kids are? Five kids. He says, guys, think of a game plan how to make it work. I'll give you one last chance. Let's go. Do you think it's possible to find, for each kid to find his balloon? Elon, what do you say? Is it, is it physically possible? Leif, you saying no? 40 seconds. 30 balloons. What's the big deal? Oh, Rabotai, listen to what Gabby's saying. Rabotai, listen carefully. You know what the problem is? When each kid gets a balloon, he looks, oh, it's not mine, he throws it away. This is not mine, he throws it away. What's the key to success? When Chacham Raful sees a balloon that says Elon on it, he has to run to Elon and give it to him. 
And when Elon sees the one that says, David, he wants a David, and David wants it. Whatever balloon you find, you give it to the person that he owns it. And then within 40 seconds, all 30 balloons will be in the right hand. The biggest problem in life is that we're all worried about how to find what I need. Let me see, oh, where's mine? Where's my this? Where's my that? Rabotai, we gotta think out of the box. I sat down this past week, two different groups of people. We were discussing different things, they were trying to see how we could get help from people in Ukraine. You know, there's a war going on over there, Shemi Shemo. And one of the people that was there, he was involved in a campaign to raise money to get the Jewish families out. Within seven or eight days, he helped to raise close to 14 million dollars. 14 million dollars, and keep in mind, each person to get out, depending on the age, could be up to $10,000, right? Because the 18 to 60, you have to go to the army, so there's a lot of uh, negotiating, and a lot of things you have to do there with the security, and the guards, and the checkpoints. And one thing I saw, I was like, wow, 14 million dollars he and his chavrak put together for people they never met in their lives. For people they probably never will meet also. But what? They're not just looking for their balloon, for their family, for their community. When a balloon comes to them, they'll try to go find the person that needs it. So an opportunity came, Pidyon Shruim, let me see how I can help them out. Says a Betzina Bashaul, what's the after Kamocha? Love your friend like you love yourself. Most people think it means when someone is Chas Shalom sick, a mother is sick, a father is sick, and they're struggling in the family. So let's go help them out. Let's go help the family. We'll do carpool. We'll do this. We'll do that. We'll help cook. That's the hafzalach kamocha, and it is. But it's at the highest level. You know what's the higher level of hafzalach kamocha? When the family's doing well and they're making money and they're getting, building a bigger house, but they need a little help at home, and you go help them out with carpool by offering your help, and you're helping them out with uh, cooking once in a while. When things are going well, that's the highest level. The problem is that we wait for something to go wrong, then we start helping people out. Why can't we just always help each other out? Why can't we always be there for each other? It's a big chisaron that I have and many of us have. Chesed isn't only when someone's in trouble, chesed is at all times of the day. If we could work together, Rabutai, to help each other out, to be there for each other, as a couple, see how we can get more involved in the community with chesed, with shiurim, with organizing this, organizing that. When you bring more bachat to others, you'll be shocked how much bachat comes to your home because of it. We all have challenges at home, and we gave a few ways of trying to overcome it. But when you do chesed for the community, Hashem brings the chesed back to you. You try to go out of your way to help out families in need. You have Pesach coming up, you have this coming up, you have that family here, and that family there. And you're getting involved, the chef says, oh, you gave extra, I'll give you back. But one thing I think we have to work on, and it's something that we all have to work on, is Shmirat HaPeh. The Baba Sali's son used to say, you want to know how you become a tzaddik? It's three letters in the Hebrew alphabet. Ayin, Peh, Tzaddik. You guard your eyes, you guard your mouth, then you're a tzaddik. Ayin, Peh, Tzaddik. Ayn is something we have to work on, especially now with the summer coming up. Working on Bezalash and the Tzniyut of the women and also the Shmirat Dainam of the men. But Pera Butai applies to every single one of us all year round in the winter, in the summer, at home alone. People think it's mutal for me to speak Lashon Ara about my friend's problems and my, this guy there to my wife or to my husband. Okay, if someone could show me where it says it's Shukhan Aruch, I'll be happy to know. Shmirat HaPeh Rabutai, to protect our mouth from speaking Lashon Ara about other people, brings tremendous amount of problems to Am Yisrael. And on the contrary, when we protect our mouth, it brings tremendous bracha. And I'll tell you what the Zohar Kodesh writes about this. The Zohar Kodesh writes, everything we say, we don't see it, but our words go up to Shemaim. The sound waves, it goes up to Shemaim. But as... Your curses and your Lashon Ara goes up the Shemaim. There's actually an angel that stands there and he prevents your Lashon Ara and your curse from going up to the heavenly throne. 
So you're probably thinking, oh, this is, uh, he's my buddy, right? This angel, he's got my back, right? Says the Zohar Kadosh, the next time you're praying for something, you need a job. You saying, Hashem, I need a shidduch. Please give me trillion, please this. As your prayer is going up, that angel takes your curse and throws it into your tefillah. Right? So, I need a job, I need a shidduch, and a curse is thrown in there as well. But you didn't say that, you said it last week. Yeah, but that's the power of the Shonara and, 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 and Nivulpe. That at a time of need, when you're praying and you're crying out to Hashem, this angel that you thought was your friend is actually taking that and throwing it to your prayers. Says the Zohar Kadosh, if we would only know how powerful keeping our mouth clean is, we would all be extra careful. Now, by the time we discuss it, we need Zechut for this beautiful boy. Bezrat Hashem, he will have a refuah shlema, Bezrat Hashem. He will be back at home, Bezrat Hashem, in good health, Bezrat Hashem. But let's give him more zechuyot. And the best zechuyot you could do is not say, oh, uh, good luck, we love him, that's not that, that called zechuyot. Make some real changes. You know, Gabriel and his wife, we were discussing what book to get, and they got a tremendous, beautiful book over here. I don't think we have enough for tonight, but we'll try to order more. It's Chavit Chaim, a lesson a day. You know, Gabriel went through the bookstores over there. He almost used to, went through every book over there in Safra about Hashem. But eventually he found something that's good. And it's a beautiful book with basic concepts of how to keep your mouth clean. Tips and chazal and what you could and what you can't. And when you could, by the way, there's times you should be speaking Lashon Ara, quote unquote, to warn someone about a businessman that you should be careful from. But you got to make sure it's not because you have some competition with him. Always speak to Allah to see when you should reveal, when you shouldn't reveal. There are times when you should talk about Shiduchim, to warn people about Shiduchim. But you got to know what the rules and regulations are. This book is a classic, classic book. You just learn it every single day. They have a certain amount of paragraphs. Watch this. This is one day. Half a page. The next day is a little bit more than half a page. Right? Every day they have a little for you to learn. You can learn together with your spouse. And you make this part of your daily learning. And what happens is, next thing you know, you start seeing, wow, I, I thought I could talk about him and about her, and I thought this and that. You got to be careful. And now when you control your mouth, now your brachot are much more powerful. Your tefillah is much more powerful. So when you're reading Tehillim for someone, the Tehillim goes up pure. It doesn't have the junk being thrown into it. So Rabotai, this is for the zechut of Binyamin Netanel Bebrachat Tova. Anyone that wants a book, you come to the front, you just write the name of the boy, Rifu Shlema over here, and you can take... If anyone doesn't get, you let us know. We'll order. We'll get a book within the next few days. Bezrat Hashem. But only take it. Not so you can put it. You know, it matches your, you know, your your couch and the bookshelf. Perfect coloring, right? No Hashem. I'm referring to that. That you will get you something else for that. The point is, if you want the book to use, you want the book to use. Take it and put it to good use. And if you didn't get, you let us know. We'll make sure you get it within the next few days. Also, we got over here. I'm not sure where she put it. Um, where is it? Oh, it's on the, on the oh, in front of everyone. Oh, they have over there Asher Yatzar Asha Yata posters. The Asher Yatzar Rabutai, we don't even realize. You know, before I came here, I jumped to a few places to speak. There's a person that had a Yushua, and no one to speak. I said, I'll do your chesed. I said, I'll come and speak there. You know, and I felt very uncomfortable. It's already 806, 808. And they said they're going to call me up after they had the dime. Like, Baruch Hashem. Next thing you know, a Bukharan guy takes the mic and he starts talking. I could see he's about to go. And I have, so I had to give him like a little dirty look. You know, I had to, you know, hello, he promised me. He's like, oh, fine, here, take it. Right? But I was watching how people were eating, Baruch Hashem. They were chap, 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 chap. You know, it's a mitzvah to eat fast by Yeshua. And I'm thinking to myself, thinking to myself, wow, look at the miracle. I told it to the people also at the Yeshua. I said, I want you guys to look. Every single one of you eating fish, they're going to have your good, good job. You're going to have some, some chicken and some steaks. I don't know what else you can eat here tonight. I said, do you realize what's happening with that food when you're done? The miracle that's going on in your body, there's a whole processing center, a whole machine over there that takes all your food and breaks it down. Where's my, my doctors over here? Let's go. Where are they? Ken? Yeah, Johnny? No? Whatever it is, explain. Boris, you know, you know, uh, ah, Dr. Malikov, God bless you. Explain what happens over there. Ariel? Ah, Chacham Raful. Can you just explain, explain to them what the, the, the miracle of the human body is? Huh? Well, hand out your business card afterwards. Come over here. No, you're not explaining it? I'm not. Oh, Danny, come over here, Danny. <laughs> I love how all the, you know, the, the, the doctors chill with each other, you know? But anyways. 
Uh, okay, but then, uh, but Cholofen, I don't know how to explain this medically, but Rabutai, it's a, it's a miracle what goes on inside your system. It's a miracle. Half of the failure, your human body. Where's the muscle guys? Where are the, the strong guys over here? Where? What side? Uh, Emmanuel, come over here. Can you stand here and do this for 10 minutes? How long could you do this for? Approximately. Six minutes? Six minutes? Can you do it for six minutes? You can do it here. You can do it there? Okay, start. Put the video on him, guys. Ah, not for six minutes. How long? So I'll tell you one thing, Emmanuel, and I want everyone to hear this. If you try to do this for six minutes, after a few, shall we try it out? Raise your hands up. <laughs> no, but you can't have your hand on the table. It's cheating, Habibi. Hands up. Very good. All right? Listen carefully. After a few seconds, you're going to start having pain. Why is that? Because you're not used to working out this muscle. This muscle is not something you work out too much. So therefore, by just going like this for a few minutes, you're going to start having a lot of pain. You know, your heart is a muscle. It's been doing this since the moment of conception and here you're born and you're one years old and five years old, ten and fifty years old. If it takes a two minute break, you're in deep trouble. There's no taking breaks. Do we appreciate what the heart is? Do we appreciate our lungs? You know, for anyone, one of you that had COVID and you were a little bit sick and you had a hard time breathing, you say, what it means to breathe. We don't realize. So the bracha that we have that's in front of you Asher Yatzar is giving Hashem basic thanks to the fact that we're able to function. That you're able to go to the restroom and relieve yourself. If God forbid you're constipated, if God forbid you have punctures where it shouldn't be punctured, if you have something that's clogged that shouldn't be clogged, you're in deep trouble. But I also this for the Zechut of Rufa Shlema, for Benjamin and Tarab Ben Rachat Tova. But I want you to don't just do it for him, do it for yourself. We have to be accustomed to thanking Hashem for what we have. Because we don't realize what a bracha it is to be able to, to use uh, the restroom. You don't, know what it, you don't know what it means to be able to have a body that's able to eat and, and process your food properly. We don't realize what it means. So I tell you, I think today what we have to do is a few things. Number one, recognize the challenges that we have. If we take the story that we read in the Gemara about the three rabbis and Kido, where you, if you want to make something happen, it's going to happen. Even from Shammai and your father to come and help you steal. If that's the way of life you choose. If that's the case for that, then you could work on your Shalom Bayit easily. If you want. If you want, you can fix any problems you have at home. That's by Shalom Bayit. When it comes to competition, Rabbi focus on what you have. Look at the Bacha that you have. Don't live to impress other people. Live to give yourself Sipuka Nefesh. To enjoy your life that Hashem gave you. You're not here to show her, to show him and what I have. And look at my tie, look at my watch. No need, no need for that. Abu Tai, just enjoy what you have, not for other people. And when it comes to the basics of life, Abu Tai, let's start working on our uh, uh, peh, on our mouth. Let's start working on our mouth. Nivul peh, we have to get it out of the system. Rabbi, can I curse at work? You know, I have to do it at work to put a little intimidation on my workers. No, you shouldn't be cursing at work. But everyone does it there anyways. Don't do it. Because what happens is you bring that nature into your home, Chaz Shalom. Learn how to speak with Derech Eretz. Derech Eretz, Kadman Torah. Derech Eretz, so keep your mouth clean. You'll see your tefillot have much more power. I urge everyone, please take one of these books. No reason to push and shove. Come, take. If you have enough, great. If not, if preferable, one per couple. Doesn't mean that you and your wife have to both have a book, right? You use the book together. So that means... It should only be one per family that takes one tonight. If you don't have enough, you'll either let me know or Robbie. Where's Robbie in the back? Robbie there. Robbie in the back. Or you can even let Gabriel know or his wife know. We'll order you more Sfarim B'zrat Hashem. But I urge everyone to take this. One, not even one page a day. And then Hashem Yatzar, I urge you to do it. Is this in Hebrew and English or is it just Hebrew? Is it just Hebrew? Yeah, it's just Hebrew. Everyone reads Hebrew here? If not, we'll get you the, the English version also, and the Russian version, and the Spanish version, whatever you want. Bezrat Hashem, we'll put it together for you. Asher Yatzar Rabotai, you come out of the bathroom at any time. Morning, Rabbi, Rabbi, three in the morning, three in the morning also. You thank Hashem, the Baruch Hashem, you're able to use the facilities, you come out alive and well. Right? Every time a person uses the facilities, you say Asher Yatzar. And Bezrat Hashem, they should all be for the Zechut, not just the Refua Shema for Benjamin Netanel, but it should be the Refua Shema for all Chole Yisrael Bezrat Hashem, 
that we should get together in good times, get together in Smachot Bezrat Hashem, and I can only hope and pray that these shiurim should always be with joy, and not Chazor Shalom for 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 refuah for anyone. It should be for good news Bezrat Hashem. And Berlin uh, Neder, I I myself will accept upon myself to learn this book as well, uh, uh, daily Berlin Neder Bezrat Hashem, and I hope everyone else does it as well. Baruch Adonai Amen and Amen.